interest of my being here has also is, is very symbolic that uh, number one is a female curator and number two that I'm uh, a young female curator. Never in the history of the Egyptian Pavilion did you ever have a 27 year old handling such a, such a privileged uh, position. Um, and uh, of course this is selected by the ministry which is an official representation of the country itself. So that's, uh, that's one thing I must admit to. And, uh, Talking about Ahmed Bassouni, never in the history of the Egyptian uh, pavilion of the Venice Biennale did they ever represent a uh, man who died for his country or a man who, who is not there anymore, an artist who is not there. Um, and uh, he is of maybe two artists who are ever represented in this pavilion of his age, young, a young uh, artist. Long process of shortlisting, and then the, the revolution happened, which changed the selection, the choices of those who were shortlisted. And then, of course, there were issues with budgets, so that was also a huge consideration in, their, uh, in the changes of selection. And then uh, there was a distraction of, of showing a work that had nothing to do with the changes. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is when Ahmed Bassouni's name was very much in, an, an enforced importance mm -hmm. um, to the to the ministry. It was proposed by not just um, the executive curator who developed the project concept, Shadi Noshkete, but it was also um, of huge interest to all of the artistic community that he be the one representing our country at this time. Okay. Um, and uh, we were very happy that the ministry was able to uh, fully support it and recognize that. The, the main theme is the element, I believe, of, of running or change, potentially, <laughs> but uh, in maybe change more. Um, it was in his work that he had done one year and a half ago called 30 Days of Running in the Place where he built a, uh, a transparent room, cube, cubiform room, um, and he designed his own suit that he would run in. And inside the suit he had his sensors placed in certain parts of his body where he would be secreting heat from you know, the sweat and of course the, the speed of his feet while running. And it was through these codes that would come out of his body, translated into a, an actual code, a digital code, he would then translate it into a visual code, which was the grid system that we see on the catalog. And it was by, by that element of consumption and waste and uh, the changes happening on that screen, but not physically happening where you are, mm -hmm. that had a huge significance in, in what he had to say about that, uh, okay. that particular project. It was a very sort of personal experiment with new media and he was of the few who practiced that type of media and very much self-taught. Mm -hmm. But it was a uh, huge importance in, the, in the addressing a social condition um, at that time. Not knowing that there would be a revolution one year later, no one knew about it. And then it was that one year later, because he's by nature very much of an activist, just in his nature, he uh, went down on the 25th of January with so many people and uh, with his high definition camera, started filming what was happening around him randomly. He was all dressed up, ready to go. And it was every night he would return home, download all the footage, go on Facebook and start telling people what to do, how to be careful, respond to people's, you know, and talk about how you must maintain a peaceful language. Attack anyone, if uh, they want war, we want peace. Don't be, don't, um, uh, how, how, to, how to protect yourself if tear gas is thrown at you, use the vinegar and vinegar. In, in tissues and yeah. cover your nose and mouth. And he was sort of very informative and it, his, his level of significance was really, really, really valued mm -hmm. by his friends and by his students and his family, by everyone. And it was uh, upon the 28th of January, which was the Friday of Rage, that first Friday where the huge fights were happening. There was a lot of aims of, uh, of uh, killing individuals, that he was one of the targets. He was uh, sought by, uh, shot by snipers and then run over by a police, uh, a police car. Targeted, yes, very much targeted. And it was, of course, his camera that was confiscated in that instant. And by the time his body was found by two individuals who didn't know him but were with him during the riots, that they put him on a motorcycle and tried to get him to the nearest hospital, which is unfortunately quite far and he had died actually at that uh, instantly so um, it was that moment where his friends uh, who were also uh, in experiencing that moment of him as Mehdi Mustafa who was with him our sound and media engineer that um, the banner a huge banner was printed right after his funeral and hung right in the square and it became a meeting point 
if you uh, you know if you call up your friends, you'd say meet me at Bassioni, and they would know where that is. And he became a very important uh, symbol from then on. He's in he's on all the taxis and in all the uh, in, in all the in, in all mediums you can imagine. He's okay. on little banners on taxis. He's he's become a very well known figure. It was uh, that footage of the revolution, the ones that he had downloaded on his laptop before he had died, um, that we have juxtaposed against 30 days of running in the place, just yeah. to, to continue that sort of element of change, of trying to get somewhere but not knowing where you're going to go. Mm.